this season's pie I'm going to be using cooked turkey. But before we make the pie, we've actually got to roast the turkey, and that's what I've got here today. We're going to be roasting this, and I'm delighted to say I've got a special guest. I've got Rod Jones here, from uh, one of the brewers from Meantime, who's going to be helping us match this turkey with some lovely beers. Rod, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a beer that we can use to help make the gravy, and then a beer that will match beautifully, hopefully, I'm sure it will, with the actual roast turkey that we're going to be producing. Yeah, our wheat beer would be ideal. Uh, very low hot bitterness, uh, which is traditional in, in wheat beers. Lots of body and a, a lot of flavour. There's going to be a lot of um, almost fruity flavours which come from the use of wheat uh, and also from the very, very special yeast which is, which is used in wheat beer. And I think that will deglaze the pan very, very nicely and, and uh, give a lot of flavour and body to the sauce. Perfect. What are your thoughts in terms of a beer that will match that, that eating experience? I think there's two ways to go. I think we can, we can continue with the wheat beer, which will complement those flavours, uh, or we can go for a contrast, in which case we could go with our London Pale Ale, which has got some very pleasant uh, citrusy, grassy, pine resin flavours from hops, but not, not a huge amount of bitterness, but a lot of hop flavours which are going to contrast and cut mm. through, you know, you're, you're talking about um, red sauce for example, stuffing, mm. you're going to cut through those flavours. Yeah. Uh, it's not a high strength beer, it comes in a little bit over 4%, so it's a, you know, it's a beer that you can sit and have a couple of bottles and um, still be awake for the Queen's speech. <laughs> now, this is the turkey I was telling you about. Okay, these are from Temple Farm in Royden, Essex, and it's a free range turkey. It's a bronze turkey. It's 26 uh, weeks old normally. Then they are dry pluck, plucked and hung for seven days. So it's all, it's got quite a bit of a gamey sort of um, notes to it as well. Have you noticed anything that's slightly different about this turkey one? Um, well, it hasn't got any legs. Well, it has actually, but <laughs> they're not on the turkey fat. What we've done. <laughs> Um, is we've taken the legs off, taken the bone and the sinew out of it, stuffed the two legs and put them together and put them together like this, like a bone and roll leg of lamb. So you've got completely usable meat here. You can carve all the way through here, no sinew, no, no bone. That's great. Because honestly, I, I don't know about you, but very often I'm quite sure that up and down the country so much turkey gets wasted, people don't eat the leg because it's very hard to carve because of all this bone and sinew. And of course the other problem you've got and this is why people say they don't like turkey. It's because they say it's dry, I'm never going to have this again, I'm having goose this year and all that. The fact is that people overcook it. And they overcook it, A, because um, they're frightened of poisoning their, poisoning their families, and B, because they're often frozen anyway to start with, and perhaps they haven't you know, frozen them properly, so they cook them to death, and they're all dry. With the leg off there, you cook the leg separately, which takes slightly longer, which means you don't have to overcook the breast. And then we use the bones, in with the, the leg to roast to make a wonderful gravy. Let's go and prepare the turkey for roasting. Yeah, great. To prepare the turkey, first of all take the turkey from the fridge and allow it to get to room temperature. Okay, preparing the turkey for the oven. Now the first part is Delia Smith, pure Delia Smith, all hail to the Delia. Basically what we're gonna do is loosen the skin of the turkey, Put your hands underneath it. Be very, very careful not to break the skin because this is like a self-basting method. That's just the best way of keeping the turkey moist. So we loosen the skin like this. And what we do then is we soften butter under the skin. Get it right down there. Spread it out evenly, and then from the outside, just massage it in so it's nice and even, and then lightly season it with salt and pepper. You don't want to over season it because if you put too much salt on there, it's going to drag the moisture out of the turkey and make it dry. Okay, what I've got here are basically two strips of thick foil. Bring the foil together so that you create a sealed parcel. Make sure that there's room within the parcel for steam to accumulate.
the turkey legs go into a separate tin with the carcass and the legs. So that's going to help us make our gravy. So I'm going to smother some butter again on this leg. Here. When the leg is cooked, we'll use this tin to make our gravy with lots of lovely vegetables and herbs and this stuff. Replace the turkey into a preheated oven, gas mark 7 or 220 degrees C. Same time, place the turkey leg into the oven with the bones. After 40 minutes, turn the oven down to 170 degrees C or gas mark 3. The turkey's been in the oven for about 1 hour and 40 minutes. I'm going to take it out now, check it, and then hopefully we'll be able to take the foil off so we can leave it to brown for about another 40 minutes. I try to reach for a stone, not a ball, but the current kept knocking. It's beginning to colour quite nicely, but it's still quite light. I'm probing it here, and it's just under 47 degrees. So it needs to be taken up to 70 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the foil off, baste the turkey, put it back in the oven to brown nicely and get to that temperature of 70 degrees. I've roasted the leg, I've brought it out of the oven, I'm checking the temperature now, and it's actually 73 degrees, which is perfect. So I want to remove the turkey leg. At this time, I've chopped onion, celery and carrot to the roasting tin with the leg and the bones, and mixed them in with the fat. There's a lovely colour on those vegetables, so we can make some great gravy. In order to add some herbal notes to your gravy, you can add some parsley stalks or thyme at this moment. The turkey's now cooked. We've taken the legs and the breast out of the oven, roasted the bones, the vegetables are roasted, so I'm now going to make my gravy. To make the gravy, place the leg roasting tin onto the stove and add 100 grams of plain flour to the softened vegetables. Use a wooden spoon to stir the flour around and amalgamate with the fat and vegetables for three or four minutes. Deglassing the pan with wood beer, boil off the alcohol and concentrate the flavour. And get all those lovely juices off the bottom of the pan. As the flour is cooking out, I'm also mashing the vegetables extract as much flavour as I possibly can out of this. To this, I'm going to add the turkey stock that I made from the giblets. The dough in the daytime leads in the wild. Now taking the turkey out of the oven. There we go, put it for a golden. We need to probe at the thickest part of the breast. And what you're looking for is the temperature to reach 70 degrees. Remove the turkey from the oven, cover it with foil and let it rest for at least 20 minutes. These are the juices from the breast that have been rest that's been resting. I'm going to pour this into the gravy to enrich it even further. Strain the liquid into a clean pan and carefully remove the fat from the top of the gravy. Then adjust the seasoning. Now that the turkey's rested for 20 minutes, let's take it up to the bar and carve some for Rod. The way I like to carve the turkey is horizontally into the bone. If you carve it into the bone, you can carve it absolutely cleanly and to completely denude the turkey of all of its meat and have no waste. And using a sharp knife, carve the turkey horizontally into the breastbone, making sure that you take clean slices, leaving no meat on the bone. Remove any string or netting from the leg and carve downwards. OK, let's see what Rod thinks of this turkey roast. If you'd like to know what to do with the leftovers, don't give it to the cat or dog, make a delicious pie. In our next video, I'm going to be making a turkey ham and stilton pie, which is absolutely fantastic.